said. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. God is good. Amen. Isn't it fun to be a Christian? Isn't it good to know that we have an assurance that our Father knows what we stand in need of and already is preparing whatever you stand in need of. He's already got it all taking place. Amen? I love being a believer. I'm excited. I really wanted to spend a few minutes really talking about vision. And I really want to present it in a way maybe a little different. You know, we always all have purpose. And we all have vision. And sometimes we really struggle with our purpose. We struggle with our vision. And what I want to do is I really want to maybe just lay out some guidelines, some things that perhaps you can see. And with these guidelines, you kind of know the difference between your purpose and your vision and maybe not your purpose and maybe not your vision. Because sometimes we think something might be the way God wants it to go and it don't line up with God's Word. Amen? If it don't line up with God's Word, then it's not God. God is not looking to give somebody some new revelation of some new scripture. God's Word, look, sometimes we do things and our made, our, maybe our, our motives or maybe our methods are quite different, but God's message never changes. God's message is the same it was 2,000 years ago. It was written for you and I so we can live throughout this day. Amen? And so that being said, I want to look at a scripture over in Habakkuk 2. The prophet, and the prophet is really, first of all, he's kind of complaining about some things. He's asking some questions. God's answering him back and forth. And here we find he complains a little bit, and all of a sudden God gives him an answer. He's talking about vision here. And we read here in the first, it says, I will stand my watch. We all need to stand our watch, amen? We all need to look out for what God is doing in our life. He says, I set myself on the rampart, which is just a tower. Many of us need to watch out on the tower. And to watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I'm corrected. And some of the just shall live by faith. He says, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain on the tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. God has a perfect time. Amen? Everything God does is on God's timing. It's not our time and our thoughts are not his thoughts. Our ways are not his ways. But in all our ways we acknowledge him and we direct his, he directs our path. Amen? He goes on to say, but at the end I will speak and I will not lie. This is another thing that we look at. The fact that we serve a God who cannot lie. Right? Listen, you've got to know these things as a believer. Sometimes we just got to get excited about the fact that we serve a God who cannot lie. What he says, he's going to do. Amen? He said it. He's the only one out there. You might have Muhammad. You might have a lot of these other ones said they were going to do things. Listen, he's the only one who said, I'm going to die, and on the third day I'm going to rise again. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. He did it. Amen? That's the God that we serve, a God who cannot lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. That's a problem we all have. Amen? Some of us don't like to wait. Amen? I mean, we live in a society today that we get in line. If we line longer than five minutes, we get aggravated. I'm speaking to myself. Amen? I pass by some places and I think, well, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to get something. I look in the lines too long and I'll go home. Anybody's ever done that? We've all done that. You got to go to Russia sometime and get in the bread line. Amen? We learn to wait in the bread line. We learn to wait on God. So he goes and say, though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry, he goes on to say, it will not tarry, behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Listen, I want to just speak for a minute. I want to talk about the guidelines, okay? I actually wrote down here a fishing guide. Sometimes when I'm praying and sometimes when I'm writing a scripture out or sometimes when I'm writing a message out, sometimes when I'm researching some things, sometimes I think of things. At the moment, it sounds good. And when I get up here and I say it, it don't sound as good as it was when I was thinking about it early, Amen. But I was thinking about fishing guide, you know. If you go and you want to fish in a certain area that you don't know a lot about, you hire a fishing guide, right? Right? And the fishing guide brings you to places you probably wouldn't even know were, were there, but it brings you so you can do what? So you can catch fish, yeah. right? And we are all fishers of men. So this morning I want to talk about godly vision. There's a guide for godly vision, amen? Now one of the things here is because uh, we need vision to guide. Okay, what does this mean? Uh, 
Well, let's just stop for a second. Let's jump back one more time over to another passage of Scripture. It says, where there's no vision, the people perish. If you have no vision, let me ask you a question. I, I want to get off track here for just a second because it's something that my wife and I were talking about, and it's not part of the message, but I really want to just, just stop for a second because I feel like it needs to be said. We were reading something. We were looking at some things. And it was talking about really speaking blessings over your, your children, the Father's blessings over the children. And he was talking about speaking really visions of hope over the kids. And I want you to know something. And, and, and this is not said in a proudful way. It's not said in an arrogant way. Please don't take it that way. But for me, I look back and I thank God every day. There was a moment in my life, there was a time in my life when I was in seminary. And I was praying. And I, and I was praying for, for our country. And I was praying for Russia. And I was like, God, give me a vision for Russia. God, show me what you want me to do in Russia. And I'm praying, and I'm walking, and I'm praying, and I'm walking, and I'm asking God, and I don't feel like there's any breakthrough. You ever been there before? Yeah. You feel like you're praying, and you just don't get any breakthrough. And I'm praying, and I'm praying, and I'm praying. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord, I felt like it was one of those spiritual slaps. You know what I'm talking about? When God's got to kind of like slap you, kind of get your attention, so to speak. I felt like it was a spiritual slap for me. And this is what I felt like God had really showed me this moment in time in my life. So how can you pray? for a vision of a country of Russia of that size when you don't have a vision for your sons. Now, I'm saying that to somebody today because I want to tell you what we did. And I, and I, and I get emotional thinking about it because I look up here and one of the proudest things I can say for, for myself and my family is to see my children serving the Lord, their wife serving the Lord, their, their kids serving the Lord. That's exciting for me. That's exciting for me. And I look back and I realize it was just a moment of time when God showed us something about our children. And so what I did, and I did this on a personal level, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to share something with you. And maybe, maybe you have children. Maybe you're here today and you're a mother and father with young kids. Maybe you're here today with a mother and father with teenagers. It doesn't matter. You know, you still got time to speak into their life. Because, listen, God gives us our kids for a reason. And, and I'm praying, and all of a sudden, God says, how can you pray for Russia when well, you don't have a vision for your children? And so what I did on a personal level, I sat down, and I wrote down, I prayed, and I wrote down a vision for each one of my sons, wrote it out. And what I did was I brought them into my bedroom, and I anointed them with oil, and I read this vision over them. And after I read the vision over them, over the course of the last several years they were in the house, and at this time, I think my oldest was probably 11, Julia, maybe 12, 11, 12 years old. And so over the course of growing up, over the course of being a teenager, over the course of the whole time, them living at home, living to go off before they go off to college, every opportunity that I had as their father, I spoke that into their life. I began to call it out in their life. I began to just say it in their life. I began to say each one that I felt like God has spoken to their life, I would call it out to them. And I'm going to tell you this morning that each one of my sons is walking out that vision that I spoke into their life 20 years ago. Now, I, I stopped. That's not even in my notes this morning because I, I, I'm speaking to some parents today. I'm speaking to some spiritual leaders today. I'm speaking to some grandparents. Maybe your kids are not serving the Lord and you've got grandkids that you have an influence on. Begin to pray over them. Begin to speak life over them. Begin to speak vision over them. Listen, there's life in the tongue. There's life and death in the tongue. Every time I hear a parent say something really derogatory toward their kids, if they call them dumb, stupid, or whatever, look, I want to come unglued. I want to just have that anointing of that brick anointing, just anointing with a brick. Amen? Because that's some of the things you could kill. You could destroy your children by speaking these negative things over your kids. Come on, somebody. Now, well, you might say, well, my parents did it to me. Well, did you like it? I promise you, you didn't like it. And as your pastor this morning, I just want to speak with all the love in my heart these things to you. I want to encourage you. I want to tell you that it's time and it's never, ever, ever, never, ever, ever too late to begin doing that. I look over and, and, and I see one of the ladies here is pregnant. We have many others that are pregnant. Listen, this is a baby producing church. Amen? That's good. That means y'all love each other. Amen? 
Somebody told Caleb, said, you got five kids, you must love kids. He said, no, I just love my wife. I said, come on, boy. <laughs> and it's time that we begin to speak that. And, and I don't know, maybe, maybe this is a personal conviction as me as a pastor where I find maybe it's time for me to just gather some men around me and begin to speak vision and hope over your life. And, and, and throughout this year, I believe God is going to do some things where we're going to begin to maybe have some meetings like that. And, and I'm really speaking from the heart this morning. I, I really want you to see my heart. I want you to see where God is doing here in this church. Because I look around this room, and I know today's a holiday, and I know that there's a lot of people out, and I know we only did one service today. But you know what? I want you to get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because I believe in my spirit that something amazing is going to happen this year. I believe that something amazing is going to happen in this body, in this church. Listen, our job is to unload hell and load up heaven. And we're going to do everything in our power to do so. Because one of the hopes, one of the dreams that we have here at Christian Living Fellowship is I'm looking for people, and don't take this on a personal level, because every time I say it, I think that you're saying, well, I'm that one you're talking about. I don't know. You have to answer that for yourself. But... You know what? We're looking for people that maybe has been hurt. Maybe has been in church for a long time growing up and had some bad experiences. We're looking for those people who have said, I'll never go back to church. We're looking for those people who have said, you know what? Church is full of phonies. We're looking for those people who have said, nobody cares about me at church. That's the people we're looking for. Because we want to be a place where they can find a refuge. We want to be a place where they can find hope. We want to be a place where we can just love a blister on people coming down the highway. We say quite often, we don't care about where you come from. We just care about where you're going. One of our mission statements is taking temporary families and bringing them to a permanent place. Because we want to bring people that are coming this way. And, and sometimes as a church that has a military, we know that we only have a short opportunity with some people who come through this place. But we want to make sure that we give you all the Jesus we can so you have enough. Wherever you go, you can carry it with you. And share it with others. But one of the things that I want to just, just, just guide you with today is several guidelines, I think, to let you know what we should look for in a vision, in a purpose, in a hope, in our life. And the first thing is this. Here's the first thing. If we're going to have godly vision, our godly vision always leads to victory. Godly vision always leads to victory. God is not going to set you out there to fail. God is not in a place he's going to put you in a position and try to lead you in a vision that you'll be destroyed in. God's vision, godly vision for you and your family and for your life is a life of victory. God is a victorious God. Let me read a couple of scriptures, kind of back that up for you if you don't mind. We find one in 1 Corinthians 15, 57, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory. How? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brother... Be steadfast. In other words, hang on, hang on, hang on. Sometimes when things look a little rocky, victory is on its way. Amen? Immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. In other words, always doing what God called you to do. Sometimes it looks like it's dark, but dawn's coming. Amen? Knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Another thing is we serve a victorious king. Isaiah 6, 1 says, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. For those who un don't understand what that means, you got to really bring into position what they were going on during this time. If a king battled during this time, if he won a victory during this time, if he was fighting another kingdom during this time, when he would win, they would take the robe of the king that was defeated and they would cut the robe off and they would sew it onto the robe of the king that was victorious. And I want you to know something. Our king, the one that we serve, the whole robe, look, his robe fills the temple. Come on, somebody. Understand that we serve a God that is a victorious God. We serve a king that's a victorious king. He's not, loose, he's not used to losing, amen? And if you don't know this, we won. I cheated. I read the back of the book. I got A to D to the 10th power. When I'm reading, I'll start reading in the front, I'll read to the back. If I don't like it, I don't really care what the middle says, amen? <laughs> Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good. Come on, somebody, that's a victorious king, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. See, that's victorious, a future and a hope. 
In those days, when you pray, I will listen. Listen, when we call out to our Father, He hears our cry. Amen? It never falls on deaf ears. He says, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you'll find me. What does He say? With all your heart. With all your heart. Listen, when we look for Christ, look with all your heart. He says, you'll find me. He says, Lord, I will end your captivity and restore your fortress. I will gather you out of the nations where I sent you and bring you home again to all your land. That's the God that we serve. Amen? A God that is a victorious king. Every vision, every hope that we have in the body of Christ, if God is leading you, leading you in a vision and a hope, it's a victorious hope. It's a victorious king. Here's the next thing. Godly vision is always, without a doubt, with integrity. Come on. God's vision is always with integrity. God is a God who cannot lie. We need to know that without a doubt, we are a church that walks in integrity. I say from the pulpit with proudness. Listen, if you ever give to this church and you find out it's used in a bad way or not used to further the kingdom, you see us and we'll give it back to you. Everything we do, we do it up front. We line it out there. We want to make sure you know about it. Listen, I want you to know that we walk in integrity. We need to be a body of Christ that walks in integrity. Why do you say that? Because there's a lot of people that proclaims to be Christians that don't have any integrity. We need to be people of integrity. And if we're going to have a vision, every vision that we have is a victorious vision and a vision with integrity. Here's a couple of scriptures. Psalms 26, King David is speaking here. He says, Vindicate me, O Lord. For I have walked in my integrity. I've also trusted in the Lord. I shall not slip. Examine me, O Lord. Prove me. He said, try my mind and my heart, for your loving kindness is before my eyes. I have walked in your truth. I have walked in your integrity. Another place, Proverbs, which is his son, King David's son, which we find King Solomon here, one of the wisest, he says, he who walks with integrity walks securely. Listen, if you walk with integrity, if you have vision and hope and you're walking out with integrity, you don't have to worry about somebody coming and sneaking up on you. Come on. You walk with a security. You know that, listen, it's easier to do the right thing now than to do the wrong thing and have to deal with it later. Amen? Another place, Proverbs 20, verse 7 says this. Now, this is one that kind of falls in line with what I said earlier about my children. It says, the righteous man... And to be righteous just means simply being right standing with God. Just doing what the right thing is. Giving your heart to God. A righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Listen, you want your kids to be blessed? Do what's right. Do it now. Listen, how can you sit there and ask your kids to, to do the right things when you're not doing the right thing? Let me look over here. I don't want to look directly at you. Amen? Amen. But we sometimes get ourselves in trouble when we tell our kids to do something that we're doing or not to do something that we're doing ourselves. And I'll leave that blank. You can fill in the blanks with that. There's a lot of things that you're telling your kids. Don't do. Don't do as I do. Do as I say do. Right. It don't work like that at all, folks. I'm telling you that we need to do the right things. Don't try to manipulate God's vision. Don't try to manipulate your way through God's vision. God's vision don't need to be manipulated. And, 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 I, and I was writing down some certain things, and I, I remember something that took place during the time we were looking for this, uh, to build this property here. And, and even before I even presented it to the church, God had laid it on my heart, and I was praying about it, and, and God showed me some things, and, and one of the things he showed me was somebody that, that I knew had some land. And, and I went to them, and I said, does your family have any land? He says, I don't know why. He says, I'm praying about some land on the main highway. And the guy looked at me with his real strange look in his eye. And he said, it's a strange thing. You asking me that, Pastor? He says, my mother's 83 years old. And she just told me yesterday that she wants to sell the rest of her land on the main highway. We don't know how much it is. I'll tell you where the location is. And it was so one of those things where everything was lining up with God. Amen? But to tell you what I'm talking about, when I'm talking about walking in integrity, don't manipulate it. He told me, he said, look, there's two men ahead of you. He says, two men that my mother has promised that will buy the land. If, they ever, if I ever, she ever sold it, she had to offer it to them first. And so I, I said, okay. And she told me who it was. And so I said, well, put my name on the list. I'll be the third one on the list. Well, the first guy got the call and got offered the land. And I didn't hear from him for a couple of days, so I called him up. I knew him. He was a businessman in town. And I called him on the phone, and I said, hey. And I called him my name. And I said, I understand that you have the first options of this piece of property on the highway. And he says, I do, Pastor. He said, but I heard you were interested. 
And I hadn't talked to the church, I hadn't talked to anybody about it. He knew about it because the guy had told him something about it. And so he said to me, he said, look, the guy behind me is probably going to buy it. He said, how about if I go ahead and buy it since I've got the first offer, and I buy it, then I turn around and sell it to you. Now, for me personally, I didn't think that was an integrity move. And so I said to him, I said, you know what? If it's not God, it's not meant to be, it just won't happen. I said, I'll just wait my turn. You know what? God always shows up on his right time. Amen? When we learn to walk in integrity, to learn to wait on God, learn to say, God, your way, not my way. Amen? Now, here's the next thing I want you to show, see this morning is this. We're talking about godly vision. Godly vision always, without a doubt, we're talking about God here. We're talking about Jesus Christ. Godly vision always, without a doubt, brings salvation. Godly vision will always bring salvation. Look, people that are looking for salvation are looking for vision. Amen? Listen, our vision as a church here, there's a lot of things I want to do. I mean, I want to build a parking lot. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do that. All these things I want to do. But can I tell you something? The main thing that our vision should lead us to is people to get saved. Amen? If we have to put a, put a tent outside, everything we do should lead to salvation. Everything we say, everything, that's why as a pastor, I don't care if I get up here and talk about any other thing, the last thing that I want to do before I leave this place, if there's somebody here that don't know Jesus Christ, I want to make sure they have an opportunity to meet my Savior. Why? Because the main thing that we do, the lead vision, godly vision, will always bring people to salvation. Amen? I love it when I get up here and I preach and the Holy Spirit just drops in this place and somebody on this side of the room says, hey, pastor, thank you for saying this. It really ministered to me. And, and I'm thinking, I don't remember saying that. But you know what? That's what the Holy Spirit does. And somebody over here says something. All of a sudden, somebody else gets saved. Guess what? Godly vision always leads to salvation. God, look, God will make a way. Amen? If you present the way, if you open the door for the way. Here's the other thing about the same line of the same thing God br brings salvation Godly vision includes every man. Salvation is for every man. It's not just for, you know, just certain people. Amen? Now, there are some denominations that teach that. Some denominations teach that, you know what? If it's not, if it's not ordained by God for you to be saved, you won't be saved. I don't believe that. I believe that, listen, God gives everyone an opportunity. What is the scripture I'm facing? None should perish, but all come to the kingdom of God. Amen? Listen, God's purpose is for every man. I don't care if you're black or white. I don't care if you're rich or poor. I don't care if you're educated or uneducated. God is for you. God is for you, and God's vision is for every man. Let's look at one passage here. Colossians 1, 27. Christ in you, the hope of glory, him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end, I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Every man. God's vision is for every man. He don't leave anybody out. Amen? Thank God for that. Amen? And look, I don't ever want to be a church that's exclusive. I want to be inclusive. Amen? I want to include everybody. I, I want people to walk in this place and feel right at home. Amen? And so we want to make sure that we do that, and godly vision always done that. And, and the other part of godly vision is this. Godly vision is always on time. God's vision is always on time. One of the places I pulled out was 1 Timothy 6, 14. It says, our master, Jesus Christ, is on his way. He'll show up right on time. His arrival guaranteed. That's in the message. Amen? 1 Timothy 6, 14. Listen, he shows up right on time. We got to trust that. We got to believe that. We got to know without a doubt. If we're really walking out godly vision, godly purpose for our life, godly timing is perfect. Not our timing, godly timing. Amen? What's another scripture here which says here? Uh, well, it says here uh, some water, some plant, but God always brings increase. Amen? He needs some people's going to water, some people's going to plant, but God always one who brings the increase. Godly timing is always perfect. And really to continue that same thought there, to wrap it up is this. When we're walking out godly vision, never forget or never give up, even when you don't see vision happening. Don't ever give up, man. Listen, maybe you've been praying for somebody. Maybe, maybe you're, you're a product of, of, a, of a parent that's been praying for you. You know, never give up. Never give up on, on God. Matthew 24 says this. He says, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. 
And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Another place is, leads right along with St. Victorious. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast and move always abound in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Isaiah says this, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Amen? We all have a great vision, a great hope. And, you know, I could sit here this morning and I can talk to you on a personal way as I did in the very beginning. But I know without a doubt there's people in this room that God has great plans for. And, and I want you to, to make sure that you know that you're in a place that we want to we want to help you. We want to encourage you. We don't want to never belittle the vision and hope that God has for you. We want to be people that helps you cultivate. We want to be people that's going to help you along the way to, to maybe give you some guidelines to help you. I know there's people that's already contacted me about certain things that God's been speaking to them about. And you know what? We want to make sure that we encourage you to do everything God's called you to do. Amen? We want you to fulfill your vision. We want you to fulfill your purpose. Because you know what? You can do things in the kingdom of God that I will never do. Many hands make a light load. One of the things that I've always said from the very beginning, and I talked about it a little bit earlier on in the message, was as a church here, one of the things I love is we need to dare to be different. Dare to be different. We don't have to be cookie cut. Amen? I know for me personally as a pastor, I've never pastored before. This is the first church I ever pastored. But I remember when I first came and I first started pastoring, Man, I was looking at all the churches and looking at what they were doing. And, you know, and I, I felt like, well, they're doing, I guess we got to do that too. And, man, we were trying to do everything else everybody else is doing. I found myself just going crazy. Why? Because we were different. God called us to be different. And if, if we're going to really fulfill and really operate in a way fully to the greatest potential, then sometimes we got to dare to be different. Amen? Sometimes we got to dare to do some things a little stranger than others. Amen? We've been called weird before. <laughs> I know I have. And that's okay. I live with that. Amen? I'm okay with that. But you know what? God has a great plan for you in this church and this body of Christ. Amen? Yes. There's several things that, you know, I could sit here and go on and on and on and on about. And I really just want to kind of leave you with some thoughts about that today. And one of the things that spoke to me several years ago when we first came here we gathered together with several churches and several pastors. And it was one of the first times we ever had a meeting with all of, not all of them, but a lot of the churches came in together. And we all had a meeting together. And I'll never forget this. I was a young pastor, scared to death, you know, not knowing what I was doing, just fulfilling whatever God called me to do. I was just a young pastor 20 years ago. I say that because I'm getting old, amen. But... <laughs> I'm still fine, baby. You're fine. Let's, let us go. <laughs> but you know what? I, I came and I was a young pastor and, and I was really nervous. And we went to this meeting and, and he, he asked a question. He said, I want all the pastors to stand up and tell them who you are and tell them where you're pastor and da 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 da. And I happened, thank God, I happened to be on the side of the room that was one of the last ones. Several other people had to go before me. And I don't mind telling you, man, I, you know, there was a time in my life I still get nervous standing in front of people. But man, early on, I was scared to death to stand up in front of anybody. And everybody's standing up, I'm pastor so-and-so, I pastor Slippery Rock Church, and I da 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 And they're going on, and you know, we're here, and they, they're naming off. And I stood up, and man, I'm nervous, and I said, Bobby Ganaway, and I pastor Leesville. And I sat down. <laughs> and my wife said, you didn't tell anybody the name of the church or anything. And all of a sudden, I looked at her and I said, you know what? I want to pass for Leesville. And that always stuck to me in my heart because it's really not about these four walls. We thank God every day that he's given this beautiful facility that we can come and we gather in, we worship, and we want to fill this thing to capacity. And, and, and I want to go to 10 services if we have to, whatever we have to do. I know the leadership just had a heart attack, but that's all right. But one of the things that I want this church to do is I want this church to be a church of the community. You know, I want to be involved in the community. I want to reach this community. You know, they don't have to come. There. There's many times I have opened my doors and counseled people from other churches. Many times. 
Why? Because I want to pastor Leesville. I want to be that person that reaches to every corner of this whole community and be that one that just does whatever we can to follow the kingdom. Because we're not, listen, we have to know who we are. We have to, we, if you're going to walk out godly vision, maybe I should have added that one in there, is you got to know who you are in Christ. You got to have the hope that God has taken care of you and he's given you something special. And there's some people in this room, without a doubt, are special. You know who you are. Amen? There's people in this room that God has great plans for you. And I look so forward to helping you this year fulfill the purpose, fulfill your vision, to fulfill the things God's called you to do. Because when I help you, this is like Amway. Amen? <laughs> You get alone a little bit of somebody else does something, you get a little bit of their action. Look, whenever you help somebody else and they follow the kingdom of God, you get a little bit of it too. Amen? So we want to make sure that we do everything we can this year to do that. Amen? Father, we thank you so much for this day and this time. And God, I just love you so much. And God, I ask you to just, God, as we walk the vision out that you have for us as a community, God, let us do it with all gusto. God, let us do it with all hope and assurance that we know who we are in Christ. God, I know sometimes we do things different, but God, our heart is for you. Our intentions are for you. And Father, we love you so much. Heads bowed, eyes closed, no one looking around. Just give me your ear for a moment. I'm not here to call you out, I'm not here to embarrass you. But maybe you're here this morning. Maybe something that was said about vision for you on a personal level. Maybe it's an area that you need prayer in. I don't need to rehearse through all of them. God already talked to you and spoke to you. I'm not here, like I said, I'm not here to call you out or embarrass you. I just want to pray with you and pray for you. I want to mix my faith with your faith. If you're here this morning, something was spoken in an area that you need prayer in, just right where you are, just slip up your hand, put it up, put it down. Thank you, Jesus. I see your hands. I see those hands. Hands all over. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I see those hands. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else? Thank you, Father. Father, I pray right now that your vision will begin to be fulfilled in every heart and every family in this place. God, each hand that was lifted, God, there was something particular they needed prayer in. God, you already know what it is. God, I ask you right now, as we mix our faith with their faith, God, I ask you right now just to show, direct, and guide and lead them in a supernatural way. Father, whatever they need, God, you're a God that provides more than enough. God, I pray that you do that for them. Whatever they need, God, begin to provide. Give them supernatural wisdom. Give them favor in the areas they need favor. God, I thank you right now in advance for their vision and their hope. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Maybe you showed up this morning. Maybe you realize that you came into this place today and you're lost in need of a Savior. Or maybe you showed up and you say, Pastor, I realized this morning that I'm backslidden. I'm just backslidden. I am not doing what God called me to do. Right there, from the heart between you and the Father, begin to pray, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I repent. Jesus, thank you for saving me. Jesus, come into my life today. Jesus, redeem me, restore me. Jesus, I want to make you my Lord and my Savior, my Master and my King. Thank you, Jesus. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Maybe you prayed that prayer this morning for the first time, or maybe it's a prayer rededication. Again, it doesn't matter. I just want to pray for you. If that's you this morning, right where you at, just slip up your hand, put it up, put it down. I see those hands. I see those hands. I see those hands. I see those hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you right now for every hand that was lifted. God, I pray that you begin to put them with the right people. God, get them with the right fellowship. God, I pray right now that you get them plugged in with the right group. God, I pray for their growth. I pray that we can be all they, can, they need for the kingdom of God. God, use them in a mighty way. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for redeeming. Blessings be upon your people. We pray this. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You see that word? Let's give God a hand this morning. Amen.